I have smashed my cubing records. In just one week, I've seen incredible progress, and you can too. But the really interesting thing is that you already know how to do this. By using a three-step formula, I managed to get great solves every single time. So let's break it down. In just a minute, I will be analyzing one of my best solves, where I have combined incredible tactics from Max and Timon. But we need to start with step number one, the learning stage. We all know that every cuber makes mistakes, even the world record holders. So in stage one, you should be focusing on those mistakes and trying to drill them out of your solves. This can be through slow solves or deliberate practice in which you try to fully concentrate on what you are doing and how you can do it better. One of the ways you can also focus on these mistakes is by getting critique on your solves. This can be via recording your own solves and slowing them down to analyze and recognize where you are going wrong. One of the main things I found during this stage is that my turning habits were very poor. This is things like my finger positions and the amount of regrips I have to do in every solve. These bad habits, for me, led to lockups and over rotations during solves, which was really detrimental to my times. Alternatively, I get a lot of critique from YouTube comments, which is always really helpful, as some of the time you won't even notice where you are going wrong, but other people will easily notice it from your solves. This obviously isn't available to everyone, as I'm assuming that not all of you have a YouTube channel. However, you can still get critiques online via reaching out to people, and for the most part, they will be happy to help as no one likes to see others making easily fixed mistakes. For me personally, comments like this really helped as I didn't realize how bad my F2L solutions were until people started to inform me of my mistakes and issues. From that point, I instantly knew that one of my main focus points for stage one should be making my F2L pairings more efficient. Not only should you be starting to improve on bad habits, you should also be learning new ideas and concepts during stage one. For me, this included taking the time to learn full PLL, which I have been putting off for many months. At this point, you will exclusively be using these skills out of solves as this is the most concentrated version of practice as it ensures you are constantly coming across what you have just learned. During this time, you will most likely be looking at a guide or videos on how to do these new methods, which means that the muscle memory will not quite be there yet. However, the more you execute these methods and consistently use them, the more comfortable you will start to become with them. You will not yet be fully capable of spotting when to use these new techniques during solves as this comes in stage two. But what you will notice in stage one is that your motivation starts off high as you begin to tackle something you've been wanting to do for a while. You will feel an incredible sense of urgency trying to combat the issues you have faced. However, something that is really common is that you will start to lose motivation as you realize this process is going to take a long time and require a lot of effort. Most people come across this issue as they believe the results will come instantly to them, but this just isn't the case. So now let's move on to stage two. This is the integration stage where you start to put the new methods into solves. At this point, you won't be able to remember all the skills perfectly and you will make a lot of mistakes. This is very common and don't worry because it will only improve the longer that you focus on this method. I remember when I learned the RA and RB perms, I made loads of mistakes as soon as I started stage two. I could easily do the algorithms whilst in stage one where there was no recognition needed. But as soon as I had to remember if it was the A or B perm, I just continued to get it wrong. This is where having a strong mental approach is really useful because you have to make sure that failing isn't something that will stop you and you should see it as a way of improving. One of the things that I did whilst learning the R perms is that when I came across them in solves I paused and really thought about and tried to remember which algorithm I had to do. This took quite a long time at first as I was recalling something that I hadn't thought of for a while. However as I did more and more solves this time decreased and I slowly got more confident in what I needed to do for each case. So now how should you go about stage two? Well, I found that just normal solves can really help as this trains you to ensure you know the case during when it is most likely to be needed. Alternatively, you can use a more concentrated method of practice such as an algorithm trainer, as this makes sure that you are consistently coming across the case you need. But this won't work if you have learned something like pseudo slotting, as this is a more intuitive and not an algorithm based method. Also with the deliberate methods, such as an algorithm trainer, I find that it doesn't simulate a real situation well enough, as I can take longer to remember a case and then press the timer. This means that on the timing sheets, I get a really good time. However, in reality, it took me ages to remember the case. This stage is all about preference 
sense. So make sure you are doing what is the most efficient for your practice. Do you remember in stage one when I spoke about motivation? Well, this only decreases further in stage two, which is why I said you need to have a really strong mental approach. Now, there is two main reasons that your motivation plummets. The first is that mistakes are really common at this point which can demotivate a lot of people. This is because humans like to achieve, but don't enjoy the process that you have to take to achieve. The second reason why you will lose motivation is because this stage requires a lot of deliberate practice and focused conditions. And I know as a Cuba, no one likes deliberate practice. For me, it is so boring and it takes a lot of effort. But what I found is that you need to focus on the end goal, which is finally achieving something that you set out to do. If you make sure this is always present whilst practicing, it will be much much easier to spend half an hour here and there doing something really boring. So now we have the most exciting stage, which is stage three. This is the results section of improving. However, it's not quite that easy. During this stage, you will become fluent in your new skill, which is great, but you can make this better. During this part, you should focus on how you can hone your results to make them even better. For example, can you change the setup of your cube so that the algorithms can be done faster without the worry of lockups? Or could you slightly change your finger position positioning during F2L so that you have a better setup for the start of OLL. These small things will have a significant impact on the final result if you can take the time to integrate them into what you have just learned. So throughout the video I have spoken a lot about motivation and luckily during stage three your motivation will finally come back up to a point where you are excited and want to continue learning new things at which point you start over again at stage one. And just as I promised now let's look at one of my best solves and I will show you how using my steps from this video I was able to make this one of my best solves. To begin with I built an X cross using the keyhole insert method. This is something that took a long time to learn but it has really helped my solves. I watched lots of videos on how to effectively do this insert which allowed for a fast and efficient cross and first pair. In just two seconds I had already completed a good amount and I was set up for a really fast solve. From there I managed to use my look ahead skills to complete the next pair with very minimal pauses and I believe I completed this case in the most efficient way. The third pair was also done fast with fairly little pauses. This is due to the look ahead which I am constantly trying to improve and it is seeming to be working. Now I said before that every cuber makes mistakes and slowing down your solves like what I'm doing here can really make you understand where you are going wrong. For me I know that if this final F2L case was faster and had a smaller pause to begin with this solve would be much faster. Like I said, I'm constantly evolving my look ahead skills and this is something that I'd like to improve on in the future. But I would say that the pairing and the insert of the pieces was fairly good after the initial pause. From there, I believe the OLL case was quite good and I think I recognized it fast. However, I would like to be able to recognize the PLL case faster next time as I had to look at the back to figure out what case I had. So whilst I managed to use the three step formula to make this solve very good, I know that there are still some things that need to be worked on. So I guess that means I will have to start all over again at stage one.